All right, and we are live. Hello, everyone. It's me again, Choco Geisha, back for another video. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for meeting me suddenly. I hope that you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I'm here today to present to you a new kind of video. I'll be starting a new series on race and identity in Japan. And the first video in that series will be this video, being a black or a person of color in Japanese spaces. So if you like this kind of video, please like it. The series will continue on um, towards the end of the year. So I look forward to presenting these to you. All right, um, so like I mentioned, the Race and Identity series is next. Uh, thank you for all of you who stayed tuned for the, um, the pop culture and subculture series. That was really fun. Um, but now I want to talk a little bit more on what it means to be a person of color as well as you know, a Black woman in a predominantly um, Japanese environment. Um, so I want to share you know, more of my um, experience with you. All right, so let's start off with a little bit of background. Um, so I was a teacher in Japan for one year. I was in Guma Prefecture, which is the countryside. Um, and now I live in California and I work as a legal assistant at a Japanese law firm. So I've worked in uh, different jobs, but I have always been, you know, a, a, the only black person in a group of Japanese people. So it's been pretty unique. Um, it's been different. And, you know, being a, um, an African-American in the U.S., you know, we're always a minority. It's really interesting to be a minority in a different kind of majority. So we'll get into that. Um, all right. So like I mentioned with these jobs, um, these are two very different jobs, being an English teacher and then being basically a secretary. Um, and the way that I'm treated is affected by, you know, the position, uh, the status, uh, the closeness to the boss. Um, there's lots of things that influence how I'm treated um, by Japanese people. But this is kind of a, um, I guess, a list of patterns that I've noticed um, how Japanese people have treated me, as well as how they've treated like my friends and other Black people who I'm, uh, who I speak to. And oh, also, if you guys have any questions, there'll be about 10 minutes afterwards for questions. So uh, please hold on to those, um, but we'll get into it. So yes, these are some trends um, and there's five things <laughs> that I've noticed uh, how Japanese people treat me when I'm the only black person in their group. Um, okay, so number one is being surprised. Um, this seems kind of self-explanatory, um, but I do notice that a lot of Japanese people really don't expect me um, whenever I'm in their spaces. Um, Japan has extremely low diversity as far as um, non-Asian foreigners. So they are not expecting a black woman when they think foreigner. Um, so I do really surprise a lot of people. Um, I do have a bit of a story. So my boss um, was having a welcome party for all of the new employees. So I went to his house and mind you, I'm the only black person at the firm. So everyone else is either Japanese or half Japanese. So I went to their house and I don't think he, I don't know if he mentioned it to his family, but they were like really surprised. Like we were talking normally, but they, um, I don't know. They just kept saying, like, you really surprised me. You really surprised me. I wasn't expecting you. I'm like, yes, no one expects me um, because I am just a pleasant surprise. Like, <laughs> and she's black. Um, let's continue on to number two is being the only uh, POC. Um, so I will start by saying that black people in particular are quite a small minority of what foreigners are actually comprised of in Japan or um, where Japanese populations are concerned. Um, it's rare to find a non-white, non-Asian foreigner um, in Japan. So I have a little list of the levels of, of rarity of, um, of races. So the most common kind of foreigner, like the most common non-Japanese person you'll find in Japan are other Asians. So you'll find a lot of Koreans, Chinese people, maybe some Filipini, uh, Filipino people, um, men, mind you. Uh, some people from like Nepal or Burma or like 
kind of in that area. So you'll find some other Asian men who are not Japanese. So that's like the most common foreigner. And they kind of are a silent minority. You might be, you know, passing by them every day, but you don't really know because they blend in quite well. So they're the most common. And then going down um, a little bit to a little more rare are uh, white men and non-Japanese Asian women. So whenever you think of a like a true foreigner, most people think of like a white man. Um, and a lot of them are in Japan for business. Some of them come for like military reasons. Um, other of them come and start a family and live here or they become like big in Japan and become celebrities and things like that. Um, so when you think foreigner, most Japanese people think blonde hair, blue eyed, white person. Um, so there, I wanna say not as common as non Japanese Asian men, but they're still, um, they're still plentiful and you'll, if you meet a foreigner, chances are they're that. And then we come to non-Asian, uh, non-Japanese Asian women who are like also, they're not necessarily rare, um, but they do kind of blend into the rest of the community, um, I guess, like phenotypically speaking. So they don't really stand out like that. Hi, everyone. Um, all right. So most common non-Japanese Asian men, second tier is white men and non-Japanese Asian women. Third tier are white women and black men. So white women and black men are both kind of rare. Um, I find that there's not a lot of white women here um, compared to the men. Um, and as far as black people are concerned, it's definitely men. Like it's really interesting because when you, for example, from a Japanese perspective, when you say foreign man, most people think or when you think black person, most people think a black man. And when you say woman, most people think white woman. So that's kind of like, you know, when you're a black person, a black woman particularly, you're like in the middle of two minorities. And that brings us down a little further. Um, let's review. <laughs> Most common foreigner is non-Japanese men. Second tier is white men and non-Japanese Asian women. Further down is white women and black men. And then the lowest tier, which is like the most rare, we're like the minority among the minorities is black women and other POC. So black women, you know, that's like unambiguous um, to black parent, black women. And then you have the POC who are like, um, kind of what I haven't mentioned before. So that includes biracial people, that includes um, people of, of different heritages, which I haven't mentioned prior. Um, we are the most rare. Um, people are definitely not expecting us when they meet a foreigner or when they're told a foreigner is going to be somewhere. We are not where they're thinking of. I shocked my school when I first went there. People were, the kids were like blown away. They're like, are you our teacher? I'm like, yes. She was like, <laughs> no one's expecting it. Yes, we are shiny Pokemon. We are, we totally are. We're so freaking rare that people, they see us and we might be like the few, the few and, and rare black people that they might meet in their lives. But I'll get into that. Um, let's continue on. So number one um, is that people will probably be surprised. Two is that you're probably gonna be the only PLC like you. Um, and number three is going to be the stereotyping. Stereotyping. Let me start this off by saying that because a lot of um, the media uh, comes from America, Japan does not have a lot of diversity. So when they see diversity, it's coming from the West. It's coming from America. And we all know how America portrays Black people. So there are lots of ideas and, you know, assumptions of what Black people are like um, that, you know, may or may not be true. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't want to go too in-depth about what these stereotypes are. The very next video is actually going to be a video on the stereotypes of Black people in Japan. And it's, it's really not what you think, or maybe it is, um, but you'll see in that one. So we'll get into that later. Um, but just know that these stereotypes are easily changed. Like people won't assume this of you the whole time they know you. Once they finally meet you, they'll realize that these aren't actually true or like you're your own person. Like for example, when I went to Japan and I was you know, working as a teacher that year I was in Guma, 
Um, my kids uh, at first thought I was, they thought I'd be good at sports. They thought I'd be, you know, doing a couple other things. And, you know, I proved to them, you know, just by being myself that this is how Deidre is. But a lot of them will also kind of project that onto other people. Like, for example, I'm a vegetarian and I had a child ask if all black people were vegetarian. And I'm like, no, we're not all vegetarian. It's just me. I am an anomaly. OK, but there's kind of things like that. So if they see, you know, a media, you know, interpretation of what a black person is supposed to look like or be like or act like, then they're going to assume that everyone else is like that. Um, and I think that's just lack of exposure. Like there's just not a lot of us here. There's not a lot of data you know, in the pool for them to be like, oh, there's black people like this and black people like this. Like, no, in some of those kids' lives, I might very well be the only black person they've ever met or will meet. And when they think of a black person, it's probably going to be my face that pops up, you know? So it'd be like that sometimes. Anyway, let's continue on. Uh, so one was they'd probably be surprised. Two is you being the only person of color in that group. Three is the stereotypes. And four is assumed ignorance. So about assumed ignorance. Um, Japan is a very niche kind of culture. Uh, Japan isn't popular like the way that, my channel is all about Japan, but Japan, it's, it's really, really concentrated. So when you show Japanese people that you know about their culture and about their language, they're really impressed. And the reason they're really easily impressed is because they expect you to know nothing. Um, when I go into Japanese spaces, people are like blown aback by the fact that I can speak the language or the fact that I can use chopsticks. People love to watch me eat. People love to watch me eat because they just, they, they assume that you, you, you don't know what to do with the chopsticks. Um, so, you know, number four is that they assume that you're ignorant. And that's why I also like really encourage you all to learn Japanese or learn like the bare bone basics about what it means to, to be in Japan and to live that lifestyle. It's not that difficult. Exactly. Using chopsticks is not that difficult, but you know, not everyone who goes to Japan, you know, knows these kinds of things. So when you know, like, you know, very rudimentary, basic elementary kind of things, they really take it to heart and they, they, they really appreciate that. Sorry, this is eBay, I'd be shopping you guys. Christmas is coming. Um, so um, yes, knowing the basics really impresses them um, because they assume that you're basically ignorant about basically everything. All right. Uh, let's continue on. I think I covered that. Okay. So number one was that they'd be surprised about you. Two is that you'll be the only person of color where you are. Three is that they'll probably stereotype you in one way or another. Four is that they have like, they assume you are ignorant and that you don't really know anything about Japan or the language or culture or really anything related to that. And number five is preferential treatment slash exclusion. And this does you know feed into number four because you know with assumed ignorance and you know assuming that you don't know anything they're obviously going to um kind of baby you or treat you like you don't know what you're doing um which also means that they're not going to treat you like they would other japanese people which means that they'll probably exclude you from some things or activities or tasks i'll explain that a little later um but when <sighs> When it comes to preferential treatment, I've mentioned in other videos that, you know, being in Gunma, I was treated really well. Like people in general really took well to me, that being like the kids and the teachers I worked with and the people I knew outside of work and school. Um, people were offering me vegetables, people were offering me rides, people were, you know, inviting me to different cultural things and trying to speak English with me and teaching me a lot of things. They were very kind, but I think you know, a lot of that I think is because, you know, we were compatible and I, I like to think they genuinely liked who I was, but I feel like to a certain degree, some people assumed that I, um, you know, I just was like, I didn't know anything and, and they felt a responsibility to help me because I didn't know and that I was new. 
And, you know, there's some people who would probably like that. Some people who, you know, like being treated kind of better than the way Japanese people are treated because you're special, I guess you could say. But to a certain degree, especially if you, you know, kind of in the position I am right now where I've studied a lot of Japanese and I'm taking the JLPT N2 hopefully in this July of next year. Um, but when you're really into the culture and you're trying to get to the same level where people respect you to the level that they respect Japanese people, it's kind of hard because you notice that you're still being excluded from a lot of things. Um, I'll turn this into my position. I'll talk a little bit about my job right now. I'm a legal assistant at a Japanese law firm. I'm the only black person in there. Everyone's either um, fully Japanese or like half Japanese and half white. There's one half who girl in there. But I'm the only black person. And, you know, I, I'm not expecting them to treat me any differently. I would hope that they wouldn't, you know, give me less to do. Not that I'm like looking for things to do, you know, I don't want to just take everyone's tasks. But I'd like to be, you know, respected as a, you know, just a member of the firm to help it, you know, move forward. But I do notice that there's some things um, that just aren't given to me, like certain assignments that aren't, um, that I'm not given a part of. And this isn't necessarily a complaint. Like I'm not unhappy. I'm so grateful for my job. I, I feel like I'm being paid to study. This is amazing for me. Um, but at the same time, I do notice that they, they treat me differently than they do literally everyone else, um, which isn't a bad thing. Why are you guys trying to locate me? <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's really all there is to say on that. So you are given preferential treatment. Um, but there are people who, you know, will exclude you from certain activities. And I'm sure this will split the crowd, but you know, take that as you will. Um, in Japan, it's similar. A lot of people are very kind to foreigners. I really, Japan is one of the places I really highly recommend for especially black people to travel. Um, because it's just, you're treated, it's not like America. That's all, I'll leave it there. Ooh, my ears hurt. <laughs> it's not like America at all. Um, so I, that's, I'll leave it there. I want you to travel and see for yourself, but they do treat, give you preferential treatment. But if you're someone who's more um, looking to dive deep into the culture and to be maybe treated as a regular member of Japanese society, you will be excluded. So it's, it's like two sides of the same coin. All right, so that was number five. Um, let's review. Um, one is, you know, people will be surprised that you're there. Um, two is being the only person of color um, in your group. Three is being stereotyped. Four is people assuming that you're ignorant. Five is uh, the preferential treatment slash exclusion. Um, and I also wanted to include um, a sixth one I just randomly thought of um, off the fly as I was writing this list. Um, and that is people will assume that you know other black people. Um, and you know, this is a similar phenomenon that you know exists in America and in, in the West as well. When they say two black people together, they assume your cousins or homies or live in the same house. I don't know what they think. But you know, in Japan, it's kind of similar. Um, I have a little story. So back when I was in uh, college, my friend invited me to one of her work parties so that I could, you know, be exposed to like Japanese people. And um, at her work party, there was a black person who worked there. And you know, he was he was this black man, you know. And we were we had group poor, you know. I was like, okay, hello, brother, you know, hello, nice to see, you know, a, f a friendly melanated face here. Um, but like, mind you, like I did not know him. I didn't go there for him. Um, and someone came over and was like talking to him, like I don't remember his name, but they're like, oh, Maurice, I didn't know you were bringing your wife. And I was like, his wife. I was like, sir. I know him as well as I know you, you feel me? So I was just like, okay, um, we don't all know each other, but they kind of assume that because you look the same, you must know each other, which is so far from the truth. Um, also, I'm, 
I, this is a deleted scene from my marrying Japanese video where I interviewed uh, Ramanda Bidaisky. She is um, a fellow YouTuber here. She's on Instagram um, and she's married to a Japanese man and has two children. And she mentioned, I didn't include this into the interview, but she did tell me the story of when she was still living in Japan, she went to um, a, her husband's work party and her husband's family knew that she was foreign but I guess they didn't know she was black. So when she went there, everyone was like, <laughs> no one expected her to be there. So there's that too. People really don't expect uh, us to be black, us foreigners to be black, but surprise, <laughs> we're here and we're black. Um, but yeah, it's, um, that's basically the list. I want to say that, you know, this is not a video intended to bash Japan at all. You guys know Japan is like my first love, like for real. Um, and I would never, you know, say anything bad about them, but this is for your knowledge. Um, I've seen some comments here and I'm glad that this is an informational video. This is just to teach you kind of where Japanese people might be coming from. And if you've never maybe been to Japan and you don't know, um, you know, a lot about what to expect being in a predominantly Japanese space, whether that be work or school or a party or an event or a festival, um, and not knowing how you might be treated. This is kind of a guide for that. So I hope that I was able to provide you guys some insight. If you like this kind of video, please like it so I can see that you do. And uh, like I mentioned, there's gonna be a ton of race and identity videos coming up next. So if you want to see anything in particular, if you have a video request, like I mentioned, Stereotypes is coming next. But if there's anything outside of that that you want to see, please comment below. Um, and I will definitely look at those, you guys. I need ideas. Feed them to me. Um, but yeah, uh, that concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment them in the live chat. And I'm going to just go down and read them. Um, but yeah, this video actually was pretty fun. So... I'm uh, in a good mood. Cheers. Yeah, okay. So let me read some of these. Oh, Kuzeni, looking beautiful as always. Thank you. Hi, Jasmine. <laughs> Hi, Mac. Strawberry Moon says, what about biracial people? Yes, um, I hope I answered that. But we're very, very rare. So you can assume, oh, we. I'm not biracial, but uh, biracial people and black women are kind of like the same level of rarity. So you can assume that we'd be treated basically the same, more or less. Um, we are the unicorns. We are the unicorns. <laughs> Shiny Pokemon for real. Um, Miss Puff says, am I good at physics? Um, no, actually. Physics was that one subject I really struggled in in college. But nice thing about them is that it never changes. Rogane uh, Uzumaki says, I'm learning Japanese right now and I spoke the basics to a Japanese student at my college. They act like a kid on Christmas. They really do. They really do. Um, and, you know, they just, they respond really well to people who are interested in their language and culture. Um, that's like the easiest way to get a Japanese person to like you is just to know the language and know the culture. Um, all right. Oh, let's see. Miss Puff says, was it hard learning Japanese school subjects to explain to your kids? Learning Japanese, I'm not sure what you're entailing in that question. Was it hard learning Japanese school subjects to explain to your kids? Um, I don't really know how to answer that. There's so many ways to answer that, but I don't know if I understand your question. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Eden King asks, are you still in Japan? No, I'm not in Japan. I am in California. I know I mention I'm in San Francisco sometimes. I just don't want you guys to find me, is all. Please don't find me. I live with my family. <laughs> um, Carlos says, you're so beautiful. This is informational. Thank you. I'm glad that I could feed you guys, you know, a little bit of knowledge. You guys, I've seen, I've seen a lot with these two eyes, okay? I've seen a lot. I've experienced a lot. And you guys, I've been through so much. And not to say I've been through a lot, like I, you know, I've been going through, you know, hardships, but I'd like to think that my experience would help you um, so that you're more prepared. You know, you're more prepared, you have a better insight. And, you know, I hope that it would also inspire you guys to share your own stories for those of you who do choose to go to Japan. Because like I mentioned with like, you know, me being a vegetarian, like not 
all black people are the same. We are all so different. We have different experiences, different origin stories. And I feel like we have something different to contribute. So I would encourage you all to share your own story because not all of you are like me. Okay, so, all right. <laughs> Cause then he says, no, she's in Sydney, Australia. Oh, I actually, I would love to go to Sydney. Going to Australia is one of the things on my bucket list actually. Fun fact, it's actually the same time zone as Japan or most of it is. I think there might be an hour difference somewhere in there, um, depending on where you are, maybe like Perth or like Sydney. Uh, but yeah. Ooh, video idea, raising a family in Japan. Actually, there is one YouTuber, there's one YouTuber. Um, her name is Angie and she just had a baby and her baby's adorable and I really wanna interview her, but I don't wanna overwhelm her. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, there's so many people I could interview about raising a family in Japan. Um, but unfortunately that's not related to race and identity, or maybe it is. Um, yeah, I, for videos that I don't really know about, I'd have to interview someone. Um, because mind you guys, I only make videos about what I know, you know, I don't know what it's like to raise a family. Like I'm not married. I don't have kids. Um, there was a video, um, request of like what it's like to be like lgbtq plus like i don't know what it's like i'm wearing my rainbow earrings coincidentally but i don't know what it's like like i don't know and if i were to, if i were to share that i'd probably get it wrong and i'd i'd really the last thing i want to do is offend you guys um because i just I, I really don't know um and it's okay to say you don't know but i probably have to ask someone who does know so it requires a little work but yeah, that is definitely an idea. I am curious too. I follow a lot of people. Actually, coincidentally, I um I follow uh Coco in Japan and I saw she did an unboxing. She is so freaking cute, you guys, and she's pregnant with a little girl. Um and yes, her husband is Japanese. So I just I really am mm, I just love watching her. Anyway, I'll continue. Sorry, questions. Oh, Miss Pup says, oop, I'm, I just lost your question. Okay, I mean, were you in Japanese school subjects? Were, I mean, were the Japanese school subjects, math, art, et cetera, harder to explain in Japanese? Um, I was an English teacher, so I only taught English. I didn't teach math or art or anything else like that. Um, I only taught English. I did have a, like a lesson where I taught the names of subjects, so like social studies, PE, like I taught them the names, but I didn't have to teach the content, just English. Um, Eden's, <laughs> oh, Eden thought I was still in Japan. No, I'm not in Japan. Makeup searching in Japan. Oh, definitely. I already know how that one's gonna go, but we can still do it for the sake of doing it. But anything on race and identity is the most relevant to right now. <laughs> Let's see. Bridget says, well, was your experience more good or more bad? Definitely more good. That's the reason I even have this channel. If I didn't like Japan, it'd be chocolate. I don't like Japan, not chocolate geisha. I love Japan so much, you guys. Like, I literally work at a Japanese company. Like, I love Japan. Like, my experience was always, always good. Always good. I look back, and I'm just like, back in the day. <laughs> Um, when will you visit Japan again? Mm -hmm. I can't answer that right now. Partially because of Corona, partially because of something else. Ooh, I'll leave it there. Would you, uh, would like to hear more about being vegetarian, vegan in Japan. That's how I found your channel. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'd love to make more videos like that. But, um, like I said, race and identity. So hopefully something related to that. Um, but as far as being vegetarian and vegan, like, definitely, I'd love to share more. Uh, let's see. Did you do touristy things in Tokyo? Yes, I did actually. There's this. Um, I went to um, Team Lab, Team Lab Borderless. Um, it's a vlog I did, so check that out. That's very touristy. People love taking photos there. I went to the Poop Museum, Uncle Museum, which is another video I have on here. Check that out. I love to go out and experience things. I'm very much an explorer, so yeah. Oh, Kira says, looking forward to the stereotype video. I've heard some crazy stuff, girl. <laughs> we'll leave it there. You'll see. You'll see. Um, some of it is what you'd expect, but mm, some of it not what you'd think. But I'll go over that in the next video. 
Um, so Kazeni says, it will be weird if you arrived in a foreign country and being treated like a normal citizen. So it comes with the territory. Um, yeah, it does. It does definitely being treated differently, but you're not treated differently in a bad way. Um, and I was considering maybe doing a video on like post BLM Japan, but we're still living it um, or like current BLM Japan. But they're responding to it really positively, you guys, like very positively. Um, and they're making some big, big changes. I'm not sure if you guys follow um, Black Experience Japan, but I was considering doing a response video to his video on um, Miss Universe Japan because the winner um, actually is half Black. She's, um, I follow her on Instagram and I still can't remember her name, what the hell? Um, Aisha Tochigi, she won first place, and the second place was also a half black person, Raimu, and I follow Raim Kami, Kaminashi, I think is her name, um, and I just, you know, they're really, they're like, okay, obviously there's, you know, something's got to change, so I'm glad they're responding positively to, um, you know, to, I want to say our cry for help, they're responding positively to, to what we are saying about our experience as, as human beings on earth, because, you know, people ask if, you know, Japan is racist. I'm like, honey, the world is racist. You know, it's, you're not going to escape racism trying to go to Japan, trying to go anywhere else. Like it's everywhere. Um, there's always going to be discrimination, but things are changing for the better. And I feel like it's happening right before our eyes. It's happening right before our eyes. And, um, I'll maybe make a video about that in the future, uh, but I feel like it's still a little early. Um, let's see. Oh, you love Coco too? Oh, yes. I want to meet her. I want to meet her. Hopefully I can go down to like Osaka Kobe and meet her one day. What about the video on how to meet people there? Get out of your comfort zone. There's a POC. Don't want to come off as too much since there's already stereotypes, says Mac. Um, well, I do have a video on making friends in Japan. I think that might be helpful. Um, but it'd be a little, it's kind of hard in these Corona days. I'm also someone that likes to, you know, go out and meet people and be social. But a lot of events are online now. So let's say, you know, try and join an online event if there's like a cooking class or something. Um, or get this app called HelloTalk. People are so freaking nice on HelloTalk. You will meet a few creepers, you know, they're everywhere, but... Hello Talk is a great place to just talk to people. But as far as in-person meetings, I think you might have to take a rain check for at least the rest of 2020. So, yep. Speaking of 2020, I have a few treats. I have two treats, actually, planned for you guys this month. I won't reveal what they are, but um, I am happy to release that. So you guys will see later. Um, let's see. I want to read some more of these. I know I'm over time. I always say I'm going to be here for like 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm always here for like an hour extra. But thank you. Thank you. I um, I don't have much rainbow uh, merch on me, but I really like it. Thank you. I'm glad you like it too. Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, Miss Puff says she forgot I was an English teacher. Um, you know, honestly, I'd be I'd be cool teaching something else as well. Um, I majored in environmental science, and part of the reason I'm vegetarian is because I'm happy, oh, love the earth. But, you know, um, I'd love to teach, like, science or, you know, chemistry or something. I don't know. Um, I don't know if my language skills are there just yet. Like, I don't know how to say photosynthesis. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Strawberry Moon Jelly says, is it true that some realtor places will not run out to foreigners just because they're non-Japanese? Um, to be honest, I don't know much about that, but I have heard that. I have heard that. In my experience, I've been accepted everywhere I've gone, but mind you, I've only lived in Japan for a year, so there's probably people with more knowledge in that area. Um, I have heard of that. But I think especially in recent years with, you know, the Olympics coming up and, you know, this big globalization movement that Japan is experiencing, I do not think that those places that restrict to only Japanese people, I don't think those survive in the long run because um, the future is globalization. The, the future is the mixing of cultures, the fusion of cultures. 
um, not only mixed people as, you know, Miss Universe Japan has shown, but like a mixed society where, you know, we're, you're, we're treating everyone equal, not based on race or nationality or language or anything like that. And that's kind of where Japan is moving in general. That's where I noticed. And that's what I'm like, really like, I'm excited. I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited to see what Japan is gonna turn into. Um, and also what America is going to turn into. Um, this election really, let's just say there's a reason I'm wearing blue, okay. <laughs> there is hope, <laughs> but um, I won't go too much into that either. Uh, so Chef Pokemon, what a name, says, what was some of the hardest moments there as a POC? Let's see. Oh, let's see. Some of the hardest moments. I'd say some of the hardest moments are from people who I haven't met, but like some people that I've overheard, um, like talking about me. Um, and they didn't know I spoke Japanese. So like random people, mind you, none of these people are like my friends or like my coworkers, like they are literally strangers, like on the train or at the store or in the mall. Like they're just people I overhear. Um, and some of them have said some like very, very like ignorant, discriminatory things about me. And I'm like, so part of me wants to like latch back and be like, yeah, 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 but I don't want to, at the same time, it's just not even worth it. Like, I don't want to even disturb my peace to go meet them in chaos. I don't want to be with all that. So that's kind of difficult. You find that you have to kind of bite your tongue sometimes um, and just, you know, live your own life and not try and prove, force yourself to prove yourself. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. And I think that's a big lesson I had to learn too. Um, but yeah, that's one of the hardest things um, that I've experienced is, is, that desire to like prove that you're that you're a decent human being but at the same time just you know I'll this is for you know all people of color and black people you have nothing to prove your existence is valid and you're allowed to take up space okay all right and I, I I'm saying that to you but I'm also like looking at myself so I'm saying it to myself okay all right um so Shortest Giraffe says, have you done a video on dating in Japan? I have actually, I've done a video on dating. Um, there's actually another video coming up as well in this series, which I will, um, you guys will see it. You'll see it soon, it's it's coming. Um, but yeah, I have done a video. Let's see, have you ever accused of forsaking your own culture for Japanese culture by friends and family? Oh, by friends and family. I was gonna say by strangers on the internet every day, but uh, by friends and family, no, I think it's more like playful teasing. Like, for example, my grandpa will always be like, are you gonna go marry a Japanese? And I'm like, grandpa, <laughs> grandpa, take your medicine. Um, but <laughs> yeah, usually just playful teasing. My family's very supportive and it took them a while to get here, but my family's very supportive of me and you know, the radical way I live my life. So thankfully. Yes, they're, they're supportive of me. Um, let's see, snap, snap, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ms. Really says, oh, I'm also half black and Japanese. Oh, welcome, welcome. Um, let's see, Ms. Puff says, have some Japanese people acted totally not surprised when they see you? Um, yes, some of them do. Um, actually, my, uh, actually, I dated a guy in Japan um, and I think one of the reasons I liked him so much is because he treated me like a regular girl. Like he didn't make a huge deal out of me being black. He was just like, this is, I like who she is basically. And that really like made us connect. Um, he also spent a lot of time in America. So I think that's might be why he's like not phased at all. He wasn't phased at all, but yeah, there are some people who just like literally are just not shocked. Um, also, um, one of my really good friends, uh, her name is Meg. She was in the Poop Museum vlog that I was in. When I met her, uh, the way I met her basically is I was at a festival and she basically is a choreographer. She teaches kids and they're just like freaking, the, the level that she teaches is amazing. So I met up with her and I was like, you're amazing. Like how did you do this? Like, tell me your story. And we literally just met up and she never made a big deal out of the fact that I was black or the fact that I was speaking her mother tongue. She never made a big deal out of it. 
Um, and you know, we're still friends to this day. We still like chat online and stuff. So there's definitely people like that who just don't give an F about the fact that you're non-Japanese. They just like who you are and they just roll with it. So yes, there's people like that too. Uh, Max says, when will your next stream be? Hmm, I think I have a holiday live planned. I think that's a little later in the month. Um, I do have a few videos um, coming up uh, that are pre-recorded, but I will be on live, I think like Christmas Eve, because I don't work. Um, I think I'll, it'll be Christmas Eve, but you'll see it in my, uh, I guess my, how can I say? It'll be like in my reel, I guess you'll see, like the um, schedule time. It should be a little later this month, though, like maybe in a week and a half or two weeks or so. Um, let's see. Kira Lyrical Me says, is your Japanese friend still attending school in the U.S. or did he go to home when COVID hit? He's still here. You're talking about Kazuki. Kazuki is my brother from another mother, really. He He's another person who just, like, really does not even care that I'm Black. He definitely, like, uses it as, like, a way to, like, share to his audience because his audience is predominantly Japanese. So he he's used me and uh, to share, you know, the Black experience to his audience, which is, like, super useful. Um, but yes, he's still in America, thankfully. And I think he's going to be here, um, you know, a little longer, uh, hopefully another few years. He has a lot that he wants to do. He's he's also a really ambitious, uh, really ambitious person. So I really am hoping the best for him. And I'm also like, we're kind of in cahoots right now. We're trying to like find a way to make something work. I won't go into too much detail, but yes, he's here and he is thriving. And he's, he's actually going to be graduating. <laughs> Is gonna be graduating next month so yeah um anyway let's see uh i think that might be almost all the questions i'm so sorry you guys this is so much longer than i thought um but we'll end this soon ms really says have you tried natto what do you think i love i love it but i was raised with it i don't like it <laughs> I am um, not to say that I hate it or anything, but I think that the taste is just very uh, different from anything I've tasted. Um, and to be honest, if you gave me a choice between natto and something else, I'd probably choose something else. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd try it again um, and show you guys me eating it, but I don't really like it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, last question is from Mac. How did you get your current job? Did you seek out Japanese seeking jobs? Um, I got my job actually on indeed.com. Um, I was looking for a job where I could use some of my Japanese, uh, particularly a bilingual job. I saw the law firm job. I applied. I got the interview and I was like, I'm not about to get this job. But I still went anyway. And now I've been working there for almost a year. So you guys always try new things and just, just try it just for the hell of it. You might just become the only black person in there. Okay. All right, you guys, I am done. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, like I said, please like it. And if you want to see more, please hit subscribe and become part of the YouTube fam. But I have another video coming um, and I'm really excited to share with you. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, but you guys have a great day or a great night and I'll see you next time. Bye. You're welcome.